where'd he get to? He couldn't have headed back to the beach. Listen. Over there, come on. In. The mailboat's in. Hi, you're Cap. You're right on time. Of course. You got my mail? That ain't all. What? Not passengers. Yep. Palm Beach is getting to be a regular metropolis. This sprout stowed away in us. Maybe you can figure out what to do with it. Yeah, we got no place for a child around here. Take it back with you. I'm worn out arguing with her already. If I shipped her out, she'd swim back. Wait a minute, Doc. I got another one. Oh, Mr. Hurley, sir. Mr. Hurley. Don't lose your teeth when you see this one. So we've arrived. Well, goodbye, Captain. It's a pity to end this delightful cruise. You must come sailing with me next year when I bring my yacht down from the north. Uh, perhaps you'll have a chance to make up your little losses at Pinochle. You're taking the best part of a year's pay down that gangplank. Oh, well, it's not the money that counts between gentlemen. It's the stimulation and companionship of the game. Hey, Captain? Oh, good afternoon. Would you give me the pleasure of accepting my arm, Miss? Miss? <laughs> And uh, you, sir, I assume, are the representative of the Chamber of Commerce? Perhaps you could direct me to the nearest boarding house. You're at it. Bethune's, that's me. Sylvanus Hurley, sir. Honor to make your acquaintance. Afternoon. Good afternoon. How do you? Say, it gets a little warm down here. You're going to be mighty uncomfortable in them clothes of yours. Oh, no, I'm used to it. It was getting pretty hot for me in New York when I left. What brings a man like you down here, anyway? Uh, health, sir. Yes, my doctors advised me to seek a complete change of scene. Bury myself far from the madding throng. Ah, Florida. There were times I thought I'd ever get here. Mail get in yet? Who cares about the mail? You planning on settling here? Uh, near Miami, sir, where I've acquired land. I shall inspect it as soon as I can arrange for transportation. I understand that no boat's running down this time of year. Oh, well, Stephen will take you. He's the mailman. Oh, excellent. As a foot passenger. Well, that'll be just... I beg your pardon? As foot passenger. The only transportation from here on south is what you got on the end of your legs, your feet. He'll walk you down. Sixty-six miles. It's a three-day trip. Beach and swamp land. Sixty-six miles, I see. Ah, oh, well, the rewards of pioneering go hand in hand with roughing it, I suppose. <laughs> what are rewards? Oh, come now. I've heard such glowing reports of your famous Florida soil. Scratch this fertile earth, they say, and vegetation springs forth as if by magic. Not only cotton and tobacco, but pineapple, citrus, avocados, tropicus, exoticus. Fruits that bring fabulous prices in the markets of the North. My, my, I haven't heard such a talker since I left Philadelphia. Oh, please, madam, don't tell me I've been misled. Oh, well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> we get pretty good money for our crops, all right. Ah, well, then I consider myself fortunate indeed. This is the way I've always wanted to retire, when the business world became too hectic for me, of course. What more can a man ask from life? and to sit on his own porch on a warm southern evening and listen to the soft strumming of guitars across his fields and the tingle of ice on a frosted glass. Say, you sure you landed in the right state? This ain't Kentucky, this is Florida. <laughs> Maybe you figure on talking them crops out of the ground. Oh, I believe I can get good men to farm my acres. I think I have a rather powerful inducement. A little over a thousand dollars. Usually, of course, I don't carry this much pocket money. But the captain of my boat persuaded me... What do you want? Got some stuff to trade. Found it on the beach. Found? You know you can't trade up here. You're lucky we don't lock you up. You ain't got nothing on me. No, worse luck. But don't count on that lasting too long. One of these days, we're going to catch you red-handed. Now, get going. I take it he represents the undesirable element. 
He sure does. Stephen, what you all talking about? Stevie. What happened? Beachcombers. Do you mean they actually attacked the United States mail? Yes, ma'am, they try. They're on. Wait a minute, they're on. Take your hands off of me. I don't know nothing about nobody attacking you. Maybe not, but I got a message for you to take back to your boys. Mr. Hurley? A gentleman's credo, sir. Maximum effect, minimum effort. Thanks for the help, mister. Well, don't mention it. I'm going to write to the Postmaster General and tell him the mail run between here and Miami has been suspended. No. But, Stephen, those beachcombers... They're not bigger than the U.S. mail, Doc. The young man is absolutely right. Uh, Mr. Hurley here wants to make the return trip to Miami with you. That is, he did up to a few minutes ago. And he still <laughs> does. You know what you're letting yourself in for? Those beachcombers can be dangerous. Oh, really? And what is their occupation? Oh, they're a bunch of scavengers that hole up down there in the jungle. They live off the beach and trap a little. But what they like best is to steal. Nothing much so far, but Theron knows you've got all that money on you. In that case, perhaps I should avail myself of the uh, protection of the mails. What you mean? Well, if I put it in a registered letter addressed to myself in Miami... Hey! Yeah, that's smart thinking. Then if they steal it, the government will have to pay you back. <laughs> you ain't taking no chances either way. Yeah, but Stephen here will be responsible for it. You're right. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think of that. You're right. I'll carry it myself. No, that's a government service. We can't let a bunch of outlaws dictate to the U.S. government. All right, I'll fix up the envelope. Mr. Hurley, the fare for foot passenger is five dollars. We leave five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, Mr. Bethune, perhaps you'd better lead me to my room. All right. Uh, mister, I'd like to go to Miami with you, too. You? I've got the five dollars. <laughs> That's not it. I couldn't take women or children even without the beachcombers. Oh, please, I've got to get to my Uncle Miami. My mother and father died. I'm sorry, died. little girl, but it's danger enough for a grown man. I'll be all right. I promise I won't be afraid. Please take me. Miss, Miss Thomas, look, maybe you'd know how to handle this little girl, please. No, he's right. It's no trip for a child. You come home with me, dear, and I'll take care of you till we get hold of your uncle. No, I don't want to. No, now, now, you don't want me to give you a whipping, do you? Now, now, you come along with me, dear, and everything will be all right. Here's a towel for you, honey, and I hope you remember to bring your night clothes along. Yes, I did. Well, it's good to know you showed sense about something. If it isn't just like a fool kid for you to think you could tramp 66 miles through the wilderness. My. Who'd ever think you'd have such nice... Well, if this isn't a peculiar dress for a 12-year-old. Child, have you been pilfering? Child? I'm Maddie Titus and I'm 19. 19? Then you're old enough to know that no decent young woman would travel unaccompanied. I don't know what business you have in Miami, but we take a very cool view of adventuresses down here. But I'm no adventurous. I only want to get home. Why do you think I pretended to be younger? Well, I don't know, but you sound very foolhardy to me. Would serve you right if some man tried to take liberties with you. Please, Mrs. Thomas, I'm so tired. Could we talk about it in the morning? Indeed, we will. And your explanations had better be mighty convincing, young lady. This way. There's a path through these trees. We're being followed. You sure? How many? Just one, I think. He doesn't know he's been seen either. Come on, we'll give him a real reception. Your 
old girl. What did you expect to do? Follow us all the way to Miami? I kept up with you all day, didn't I? Well, what are we going to do with you now? Do? Well, there's obviously nothing to do but turn around and send her back the way she came. All right, Miss Muffet, off your tuppet. I can get up by myself. Oh, no, no, back talk. <laughs> Children were made to be seen in... <laughs> Our little girl, you better turn around and start marching. I didn't contract with Uncle Sam to run no nursery train. Who are you to be talking so high and mighty? You're not wearing any long gray beard. I'm old enough to know I'm responsible for this route. Stephen, uh, Stephen, old boy, I think we've decided too hastily. What? Well, we could be good Samaritans and take her along. Yes. This Florida sun must be getting you. Oh, you're a strong, determined man, Stephen. As for me, I guess I'm just sentimental. There's something about the plight of a poor little orphan that... Well, I just can't help myself. Well, I'd like to help her, too, Besides, but... Besides, she couldn't get back before dark. We'd have to take her and lose a day's walk. What about the beachcombers? Oh, now, Stephen, you don't seriously think they'd find anything appetizing in this walking collection of mud and burlap, do you? Well, you got a point there. Well, I've never... Well, no enough. offense, miss. I'm certain that sooner or later you'll grow into a lovely ornament of Florida womanhood. Perhaps sooner than anyone could believe. Well, Stephen, what about it? Well, I guess it's all right. Let's go. After you, miss. Oh, look! Come on, we better keep going. I just want to look at this pretty shell. The little girl has the gift of discovering beauty even in the unlikeliest places. The talent we have in common. It's just a cock shell. There are lots of them around. Come on, we haven't got time for you to be picking up toys. All right, Grandpa. <laughs> See what you're bothering with that for after only one day's walk. Ain't nobody gonna see you but us. Always stay immaculate on trip, Stephen. You never know whom you might see or um, who might see you. She sure went off to sleep quick. Too doggone tired to even go down to the pool and wash. Of course, I guess with a kid like that, washing's not too important. Cunning little tack, though, isn't she? Good little sport, I'll say that. And with a few years and a lot of soap, she might even turn out half tolerable. Apparently, single girls aren't very plentiful around these parts. Must be pretty strong competition for them, man. Huh? I'll see. I don't believe I've heard of more than four or five unattached women since I got interested in the subject. Perhaps you should learn to play pinochle. Oh, I mean to get married, all right. That's why I got this job. Got a pretty little piece of land I want to farm. Only first, I got to get some money to fix it up. Then I'll go up north and get myself a wife. You know, a man can't farm without a wife. Well, that's as good an excuse as any, I suppose. Most men go up the coast when they're in the marrying mood. They say them hired girls will jump at a chance to get a house of their own. There's a preacher will marry you the same afternoon, too. Saves a man the cost of even one night's lodging. <laughs> well, that's business-like. But I figure there ought to be more to it than that. Don't seem right to me for a man to go latching onto a woman like he's getting himself a horse. After all, a man can tell when he's getting a good horse. But a woman will... You can't tell by looking at their teeth. Hmm? Uh, Stephen, uh, what, um, what type did you have in mind? Oh, a girl ought to be the kind that makes you want to do things real nice for her and likes the same kind of things you do and laughs at the same things. <laughs> she ought to be real feminine without being too female. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you're an idealist. No, just a bachelor. Well, same thing. I advise you to stay that way. You know, you never know how happy you are until you're married. And then, of course, it's too late. Don't you like women? Oh, I find them delightful. As long as they're single, it'll leave me that way. Women, Stephen, are like meals. Absolutely necessary, but very, very uncomfortable when they stay with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, good night, Stephen.
It's just a little cub. Nothing to worry about. Hey! Hey, Yeah. Hey. Stephen, I, uh, I fear we've been bamboozled. How old did you say you were? I'm 19. Oh, no. I'm sorry if I fooled you. You most certainly did. Otherwise, I should never have suggested you come along. But I couldn't stand that northern school, and if people had known how old I really am, someone might... You don't have to have... explain. What's your uncle gonna think? I don't have an uncle. It's my father. Your father? Who? Benjamin Titus. Oh, no. He's a powerful good shot, too. I don't know which one of us he's gonna come looking for first when he finds out we brought her down here on chaperone. Oh, you should be very flattered, Stephen. We'll be the envy of every man in Miami. After all, you're looking for a wife. I told you what kind of woman I'm looking for. Do you think that little mud ball fills a bill? You're taking an awful lot for granted, it seems to me. I'll have you know that I'm not ready for any wedding, shotgun or otherwise, so don't you gentlemen worry about me. Well, there's something else we ought to worry about now, and that's the beachcombers. If they thought she was a child, they wouldn't bother her, but... Now what are we gonna do? Well, first, I suggest you hand Miss Titus back her trousers. <gasps> <laughs> See, we should have brought a boat. <laughs> All aboard, miss. extra weight. Better center yourselves and keep your hands inside the boat. What? I don't see why. Oh, uh, yes. Now I see why. Uh, you know, a peculiar thing. That one right over there looks like one of my old school teachers. She's the reason I left school in the third grade. They are hungry, too. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, you're wrong, Stephen. He's not hungry, he's just looking for a toothache. It's a short stretch from here to the beach. From there, you can almost see my amp. Sorry, I can't stay for dinner. Call it. Now, this is what I meant, Stephen. Always stay immaculate on a trip. You never know whom you might see. May I help you? You gotta give me what I want, or do I have to take it? Well, we ain't got nothing that belongs to you, Theron. Well, I got something for you. Take it easy, take it easy. Come on, let's get the money. It ain't in here. Yeah, I must have trusted it to Stephen. Your method of robbing people is direct and extremely old-fashioned. You got a better way, I suppose? Oh, yes. Do it quietly, legally, but above all, pleasantly. That's United States mail. You ain't gonna find nothing but trouble in there.
Well, you uh, have the money now. I guess I'm lucky you uh, left me this. Say, I could use a timepiece. Huh. That's a pretty little toy, ain't it? Yes, it's very interesting. This time, they won't be satisfied to leave us unconscious. Well, what about Addie? I'm thinking of Addie. How long will it take to get help from Miami? Oh, about four or five hours, round trip going fast. But by then, they'll lose themselves in the jungle. If I can make it there and back, can you follow them now and leave a marked trail? Yeah, yeah, that would be better. Probably gone up the river. Tell you what, take this direction till you get to the beach, and then keep going straight till you run into Paget's store. I'll find it. <laughs> Hurry. Try something. A gun for me, too. We ought to clean them off for good. You look like you put up a pretty good fight. Just the same, it was a losing one. Mr. Titus, I can't tell you how badly I feel about your daughter. It wasn't your fault. We're all here now, ain't we, old? That ought to be enough. All right, let's go. That Sylvanus Hurley is a mighty quick thinking and acting man. Handsome, too. Oh, Della, will you never learn? Not with you sitting on me all the time. What do you suppose they want with Addie? Who's that? Hold it. It's us. What do you got there? You brand a wildcat. When are you going to learn to be nice? Tie her up over there. That'll keep her quiet till we get out of here. Oh, we got to keep moving. She's held us up enough already. Did you get the money? What do you think? How much? How do I know? I haven't had time to count it yet. Empty. They tricked us. Somebody did anyway. He's broken branches all along here. Better light the torches, man. Hurry, hurry. I say we leave the girl behind. I'll say what happens to the girl. Since when is she your personal property? Yeah. It looks like we don't get anything out of this. Now, I still want to know what happened to that thousand. So do I. The way that mailman fought, he didn't know the pouch was empty. You saw me open it. Did you see any money in it? You had it on you all the time till we got here. He ain't saying you slipped it out for yourself. 
I'm just saying they put up an awful big fight for nothing. Appears like you're itching to fight about something. Well, I ain't afeard to, if that's what you mean. Take it easy, you. I'll get the orders around here. Hey, the girl! After her. Don't let her get away. I know we're running off like that. our best chance. Straight through here. This time you ain't getting up ever, male man. That was Addy. The beachcombers, they must be up ahead. There's too many of them. Let's get it. <laughs> characters up. You all right, Steve? Yeah. Farron and the other one got away. Well, we got these two anyway. What do we do with them now? We'll lock them up until the van and schooner we comes Cuba in. North from Cuba. The government know how to handle these boys. Yes, really. I'll never be able to thank you two enough. You take hold pretty quick, Mr. Hurley. You're very kind, Mr. Titus. To think a complete stranger could get through these jungles and organize a posse so fast. Why do you suppose those beachcombers were so anxious to get that mail? The Aaron knew I was carrying a thousand dollars in a registered letter for Mr. Hurley. Did they make away with it? I'm not so sure. They were talking about that when I was listening outside the hut. I heard Theron say that, that there was no money in the pouch. How did you know? Stephen, I took the precaution of removing it from your pocket the first night we camped. I was sure in case of attack, they'd search you more thoroughly than myself. You could have told me about it. Well, you're too straightforward, Stephen. One look at your face, they'd have known you weren't carrying it. It's a sense nobody'd know nothing from looking at your face. Well, thank you. I consider that a compliment. You're lucky Sylvanus is an honest man. If he hadn't spoke up, he could have made another thousand off the government. Yeah, I know. May I? This is still registered mail. You can get it when you identify yourself to the postmaster. Guess we'd better start going. Unless Miss Titus cares to rest for a while. No, I just want to get out of here. Well. I'm very anxious to see the rest of Miami before I move on to my beautiful plantation. You seen Paget's trading post? Oh, yes. You seen Miami. City folks, ain't it? Well, as a gentleman farmer, I reckon I'll have to get used to early rising. 
Uh, how can I find out where parcel 43 is located? Right here. I'm the Commissioner of Deeds. <laughs> well, you seem to be just about everything. Mayor, too. Parcel 43, huh? Well, here it is. Hmm. Say, where'd you get a hold of this piece of property? I, uh, I got it in exchange for the controlling interest in a business I'd formed. Made a pretty good trade, hmm? I think so. The land is fertile, isn't it? And, uh, level? Yeah, it's all that. Tell me, juleps being my favorite beverage, how is the soil for mint? Mint? Well, can't say offhand. Let's get going, Colonel. I'll introduce you to your property myself. <laughs> well, that's exceedingly kind of you, sir. Well, don't think anything of it. I just wouldn't feel hospitable if I let you go out there alone. <laughs> neighborhood. Yeah. The uh, first thing I'll have to do is to build a road through here to my property. How much farther is it? We're standing in it. What? This? Don't tell me that this... It is kind of hard to see the land, but it sure is level. That line cheating low down. Ah, what about that fellow up north said that he tried to sell that stock you traded him? He's probably living off of the fat of the land by now. An honest man has no defense against crooks, Patchett. He puts his faith in the wrong people. Comes in handy for the crooks, doesn't it? Yes, I suppose so. Well, land is land. This is my major asset. There must be some way to make money out of it. Oh, don't let it bother you. Nothing to spend it on down here anyway. <laughs> well, that's cold consolation. The folks down here can't find anything to do with their crop money except hide it from the chimney. Indeed. If I had something to sell, I'd make a fortune. Oh, indeed. They uh, have as much as that put away. Mm -hmm. I'll say. I'd be a rich man in a year if they ever took a notion to bring a railroad in through down here. Uh, not that they ever will. No. A railroad? Yes, a railroad would make a difference. All the difference. Why, anything could happen in a growing town. Well, shall we go? I must write my financial advisors in the north. You don't discourage easy, do well, you? Why should I? To a man of vision, every situation has its opportunities. Ah, Florida, dear Florida. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't fail me. Oh, poor Mr. Hurley. That old swamp over by the Henderson place. Yeah, too bad. We could have used an up-and-doing citizen like him. He must be a broken man. Yeah. Good afternoon. Ladies, Mr. Pickett. Why, Miss Della, what a handsome bodice. Don't tell me they have boats plying directly from here to Paris. Oh, Mr. Hurley. <laughs> Made it myself. Not so much. And, Miss Emily, that bonnet. It's incredible. Certainly you ladies will have no trouble taking your place in the world of fashion when the boom comes to Miami. Well, where is Mr. Uh, Mr. Padgett? Oh, he's across the river looking after his traps. Oh. Anything we can do for you? Well, yes, I was very anxious to get these off as soon as possible. Do you know if uh, Stephen is starting out again tomorrow? Oh, he will, the young fool. We try to talk him out of it, but there's At no... At least this time he'll be carrying a gun. Well, he's a brave boy and he's right. Miami must be able to communicate with the outside world during the next few months. Maybe I'm being selfish, but it means a lot to me personally. I'll have to direct operations from here until... Until when? What did you mean about the next few months? Uh, why, why, nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, excuse me, please. You mean you're going to stay on? Why, certainly. Why not? We heard about your land. Oh, my land. Yes, it was a bit of a shock when I found out how much reclaiming had to be done. But when it's drained and filled... Drained? Filled? That would cost a fortune. Soon, land here will become so valuable that any expense will be justified. After all, what was New York in the beginning but a cow pasture worth $24? Now, believe me, when people start to flock here by the thousands... <laughs> but how? I mean, not everybody is willing to walk like you did. Yeah, draining and filling takes equipment. They expect Steve to carry that. And the northern boats only stop here during crop time. Well, there are other methods of transportation, you know. Oh, it'll take a while for my equipment to get here. But in the meantime, I'll look around for more land to buy. Don, if I don't think you've got something up your sleeve. <laughs> uh, oh, what other kind of transportation? A railroad, maybe. In the next few months, you said. Did I say that? Well, I... I certainly didn't mean to. Uh... Oh, no, it uh, just kind of slipped out. You got advance information, haven't you? You'll forgive me if I'm not at liberty to answer your questions. And I hope you'll forget anything I might have said. I know you wouldn't want to take advantage of my indiscretion. Excuse me. 
Did you hear what he said? We're going to have a railroad. Now, Della, he didn't say definitely. You could see he didn't want to get around. Oh, oh, I wouldn't dream of telling. Nor me. Well, I got to be going. So long. Think of it, Emily. Ladies of fashion. I'm just going to have a pinch of snuff before I burst with excitement. Oh, do come along, Della. A railroad? I... Are you sure that's what he said? I tell you, he's cagey. But if tonight you can get him to say for sure, then... We'll... I'll manage it. If he can't, I got an idea. Now, it's my hunch that he's kind of sweet on Addie, and if she'd warm Take up... It. It's just an idea. You come along. I'll handle this. Come in, uh, come good in. Good evening. I see you walked over together. No, as a matter of fact, I found Stephen here on your doorstep. I think he was working up the courage to knock. Oh, no need for that. Both of you are welcome at any time. And this is the first time I've had a chance to thank you properly for... Good evening. Miss Titus, I'm speechless. And from Sylvanus Hurley, that's a compliment indeed. Hello. Hello. I'm afraid my poor gift will be only gilding the lily. Miss Emily told me where I could gather these this afternoon. Why, thank you. That was very thoughtful. Wasn't it, Stephen? Uh, yeah. Won't you sit down? I have to tend to some things oh, in the May kitchen. I be allowed to help? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a little word with you. Perhaps Stephen could help Addie. Yes, sir. I can see you'll be very useful in a kitchen. Sit down. Thank you. Sylvanus, I want to tell you how sorry I am about your bad news today. Bad news? Yes, your land. Oh! I can see rumor travels pretty fast in these parts. No, I'm not discouraged, Mr. Titus. I haven't lost one particle of my enthusiasm for Miami. Just where do you get this enthusiasm? Not from Henderson Swamp, that's certain. No. No, I've seen prosperity come suddenly to other sections of the country. Prosperity doesn't just come to a place. It's usually broad. Someone's been talking. Yes, I was afraid of that. You mean about the railroad? Why, I said nothing about any railroad. Then what are you afraid they're talking about? Oh, there's no need to answer. I can see it in your face. You know, down here, I'm supposed to be a pretty coony fellow. Coony? Oh, yes, yes, I can believe that. They could use you on Wall Street. Dinner's ready. We talk about it later. Yes, thank you. Guess they've finished their talk yet? We've only been gone two minutes. Of course, if it's such torture for you to waste your time oh, on no, me. Oh, no, ma'am, Miss Titus. You used to call me Addie. Thought you were only 12 years old then. Oh, you like younger women. It was certainly a lot easier to talk to you. Why, I haven't changed, have I? Not really. Miss Titus, Addie. Uh, I uh, brought this down and left it out here for you. Didn't want to bring it inside. Remember that cock shot you were looking at on the way down? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you don't share my love of nature. Oh, but I do. I picked this up a couple of months ago on the beach. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. The prettiest, too. If you'd care to have it. It's lovely. It's just cluttering up my place anyway. Stephen. Tell me about your place. The one you told Sylvanus you planned to farm someday. Oh. It's a nice little piece of property that I... You weren't asleep that night. You heard what we said. Maybe. When are you going north to find yourself a wife? I don't know. I might not go now. Oh? Have you, uh, changed your plans? Uh, I... I think we'd better go back in. Your father might think that... He's much too busy talking to think anything. Well, now, Sylvanus, all things considered one side and the other, I don't see what you have to worry about. I just can't help it. If this thing gets out, as sure as taxes, there'll be an uncontrollable boom. Mr. Titus, I like money. I've always made money. But there's one thing I cannot stand. Irresponsible speculators. They keep out solid capital. They'd endanger my holdings. See what you mean. And I'm thinking of these good people here. They'd be offered what they thought were honest values. And then, later, they'd find out that they'd lost fortunes. Oh, people are more sensible than that. Ah, not when fast-talking swindlers get to them. Soon they'd be at each other's throats, undercutting, and bidding. It would be impossible to, uh, to hold them together. Oh, there must be some way. 
You could find it before things started to happen. Yes, but what? A, a company, maybe. A company? Get everyone to pool their land, sort of. Under one head. Uh, people had shared according to what they put in. Oh, you mean sort of a, uh, what do you call it, a corporation? Oh, see, you know all about these uh, things. Yes, but you had the idea first. Mr. Titus, I think you've hit on something. It would take money, of course, for development. I'd be happy to put in my thousand. Oh, we it... all have money put by. I, I guess we could raise quite a respectable sum. Indeed. And then uh, responsible officers from your community, of course. And you. Oh, not I. Not me. I'm, I'm just a stranger. Oh, well, who else could handle the kind of figures this is called for? We'd better go back in. Here they are. We'd best sleep on this and go into it more tomorrow. All right. Come in, Mr. Hurley. All right, Stephen. I'll walk home under your watchful eye. When do you leave for Palm Beach? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, so soon. I haven't seen nearly enough of you this evening, Miss Titus. But from now on, I'm sure we won't have uh, business matters to keep us from getting better acquainted. You'll be back by Friday night, won't you, Stephen? Yes, sir. I don't aim to miss that dance. A dance? Oh, Miami will be there. I was just meaning to It'll be an honor to escort you, Miss Titus. Thank you very much, but I'm going to the dance with my father. I'll look forward to seeing both of you there. <laughs> I see that fancy school north taught you a few things anyway. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Miss Titus. Good night, Miss Titus. Good night. Mr. Hurley, I want to say something. Well, that's a surprise. I know what you think about women, so I want to get something straight. You harm Miss Titus in any way, and you got me to deal with. Stephen, men treat all women differently, as they deserve. What do you think Addie deserves? The best. And that's the kind of treatment I intend to give her. If I do anything else, you can hand out what's coming to me. Will you shake on that? Guess I can't object to that. <laughs> Wish I could figure out whether I like you or not. Oh, don't rush it, Stephen. I've been worrying about it for years, and I still don't know whether I like me or not. Stephen, you leaving at sunrise? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hurley, uh, uh, can I speak to you a minute? Well, you certainly can. You know, the minute you walked into this place last night, I just knew we were going to be friends. Well, that's very nice of you, sir. Yeah, saying. right then, I felt like I knew all about you. Hey, you remind me of a fellow I knew up north once. Of course, he wasn't near as elegant, and this was a long time ago, but I was as close to him as, well, as I am to myself. Oh, indeed. He traveled a lot like you, and he was popular like you, and most every town he'd been to wanted him back again. Really, whatever became of him? Well, a few years ago, he got into a little trouble and had to come south for his health. To Miami, of course. Maybe. As I remember, the biggest mistake he made up there was not trying to get along with the right people, the ones who had influence in the town. Mm-hmm. Sounds rather foolish. Mm-hmm. It was. For instance, in this town, people are too busy working their land to want extra jobs, and that's why I'm postmaster and commissioner of deeds and mayor and sheriff. And that's why it pays a certain kind of fella to play along with me. I see. I was wondering who provided the beachcombers with supplies. You must see some rather colorful characters on your trapping expeditions, huh? Oh, I get around, and I hear things, too. Like this rumor about a railroad coming to town. Now, the way I figure, the man who started that idea must be planning to make some money out of it one way or another. <laughs> that's all right with me, but I just think my position entitles me to be, a, well, a kind of a partner. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Badger, but I don't know anybody who needs a partner. They're not that kind of partner. So, Venus, folks around here think a lot of my business sense. If I was to tell them to not take much stock in this railroad talk till I wrote to Titusville and made sure, well, uh, on the other hand, with my backing, it'd be a real respectable enterprise. Well, that's very interesting. In that case, I may have room for a partner after all. Stephen. Party. Hi, Stephen. Have any trouble with the beachcombers? No, I guess you scared them off for a while. What's this thing? This is the new ferry. Hop aboard. I'll show you how it works. Get ready for when the new railroad comes. Railroad? Yeah, it turns out that's why this Sylvanus Hurley came to Miami. He sure has made himself popular around here, especially with Addie. So popular, everybody insisted he'd be treasurer of the new company. The Miami Amalgamated Improvement of Land and Investment Corporation, LTD. When did this happen? Well, that's been going on since you left. Everybody's joining up. Glad it's present. In case you'll be putting in with us today and tonight, Addie is Paul, the chairman of the board. 
speech, isn't it? Too pretty. People are beginning to talk about us. Well, maybe we should get away from people. And I don't think that we should take a stroll outside. Oh, but dancing so public. Dancing so safe. Well, don't you know by now you're safe with me, Addie, seriously. If tonight's the success, I hope, I'll be heading north. Oh? I'll have to purchase equipment for the company. When are you leaving? Well, the Havana schooner puts in in a few days. I'll take that back to Cuba and then New York, Addie. It would make a wonderful trip for our honeymoon. What? You're no more surprised than I. You know, you're an alarming girl. You realize you've shattered my firmest principles? You're the first girl I ever proposed to. I hope you're the first to accept. Oh, please don't answer. <laughs> Still locked up, huh? Sure am. Right in there. Ain't taking no chances. Three of us. Could I claim a dance? You'll excuse me, Sylvanus? Only reluctantly. Why, Stephen, you're a splendid tonight. You must give me the name of your tailor. Come on, Stephen. I've come a long way for this. Hope you find it's worth it. Be worth it just to look at you. <laughs> I think I better do it now. I hate to interrupt the dancing even for a moment. But since all of the residents of Miami are present this evening, I have an announcement to make I think you'll all be vitally interested in. Yeah. The Miami Amalgamated Improvement of Land and Investment Corporation Limited yeah. is now in pretty good shape. We still have, of course, a few doubting Thomases like Oak Bacardi here. <laughs> but please, please don't laugh. This is his privilege. We only want people to come in of their own free will. Now. There's been some sort of vague rumor floating around that a railroad might come to Miami. <laughs> I guess that's a secret that just leaked out. <laughs> but here's one secret that didn't leak out. Actual construction from Titusville South will begin the 15th of next month. <laughs> well, I guess that settles it. Here's my deed. Congratulations, Oak. And here's my money. Oh, it's in. What proof have you got the railroads coming in? $1,000 invested. Do I look like the kind of man to throw my money away? You got any proof like that, Stevie? Well, don't worry about losing your job, Stevie. We'll find something for you to do. Well, that's enough business for tonight, eh? I guess yeah. I better lock this money up in the store safe. See you later, Paget. Addie, I believe it's my turn for a dance. Your turn? Isn't it? Well, Stephen, you mustn't be greedy. I warned you before I left. It's true you warned me I wouldn't be able to resist Miss Titus's charms, and I haven't. My whole personality is changing. Not enough for me, I didn't. Stephen, come on! Dance them off their feet. Last man standing kisses Addie. Last man standing wins. Stop the music.
you shake a mean limb, Stevie. Get your kiss, Stephen. Come on, take your kiss. As a loser, I claim the consolation prize. Oh, oh. Help! Help! That's enough. Come on. Shells. It appears that's not all they took. For company money, it, it's gone. We'll track down those scoundrels if we have to comb every foot of jungle in Florida. Everybody go home and get your own gun. And hurry. Beach combers. Beach combers. They broke into my house and other houses, too. And all they took was our guns. What? We'll never get our money now. It's worse than that. We'll run off. They were dangerous enough before. There's no telling what they'll do now. We must get guns from somewhere. I can bring some from Palm Beach. I'll go with you, Steve, in case they try to stop you. No, but I got a better chance of getting through alone. Stephen, Stephen, be careful. I will. Addy, perhaps I'd better see you home. Those beachcombers might come back. You ladies better head for home. <laughs> uh, well, worked out fine, didn't it? I'm not so sure. They were pretty rough on those two guards. I had to make it look real. Just look what they've done to my place. The money? Mm. Right here. <sighs> well, I guess you got everything you wanted out of Miami, huh? Almost everything. Why are you taking that? Because I'm worried. Why did they take all the guns from the houses? We're just playing safe, I guess. I wish I knew what was going on in Theron's mind. He's a dangerous man. Theron, he's an idiot. That's why he's dangerous. Not one gun left in Miami. There'll be real trouble down there if those beachcombers start anything more. Sounds like they had it pretty well planned out. Here you are. All we had at home was this old horse pistol. The beachcombers knew just about where everything was. The guns, the prisoners, the money. But, Stevie, you better get some rest. No time, Doc. Got to get back right away. Hey, look after the place for me until we come back, will you? I'm going to help Stevie carry these guns. Sure enough, Doc. Come on, let's see Padgett get our share of the money. Why the hurry? There ain't nothing we can spend it on in here. Yeah, we're still stuck in this mangy swamp. What do we get out of it anyway? Just did the dirty work for Padgett, not Sylvanus. Yeah, that's Sylvanus. Him and his fancy clothes. Giving orders, sitting around town and taking it easy. He can get out of there and live high. He ain't any better than the rest of us. I say, hey, oh, no. no! Why shouldn't we be sitting in town instead of him? Yeah, why not? We got all the guns. That's right. They can't keep us here no more. What are we waiting for? Sure, we could sneak in tonight. Sneak in? Why? We can walk in tomorrow in broad daylight and take what we want. And I got something all reserved. Padgett! Man, what's the idea of you coming here? Anybody see you? What if they did? I got the boys along for protection. You fool. Where's that good whiskey you keep hidden? I'm tired of drinking that stuff we make. Well, what are you figuring on doing? The whiskey. Not the jug, the bottle. That's better. We ain't ever going back in them jungles no more, Padgett. We figure on joining the hospitality of Miami for a spell. Well, you can't get away with it. The mailman's bringing in the guns from Palm Beach. We'll have a nice surprise at the river. We got a couple of my boys waiting for them. Well, even so, the Havana schooner's coming in. Yeah, with a crew of four. We'll take that over and get out of this hole once and for all. You know, they say living's pretty good in Cuba, Padgett. You come along? Me? With your cutthroats? I'm a respectable citizen in this town. I've got an investment here. Hey! Clara. What's that? There's just a couple of boys making themselves welcome. <laughs> hey, how's your investment look to you now? You better come on out and join the fun. No. All right, it's up to you, but we ain't gonna drag you on board. But when we sail, the money goes with us. All the money. Theron, wait. I'm with you. Here we are. Come on, cutthroat. <laughs> Thank you. 
in Oates' house because he tried to resist. I guess we'd better let them take what they want until we get those guns. The first thing we've got to do is to take Addie out of here. Come on, Addie. Leaving? Now, that don't seem friendly-like. Dan, well, what are you doing? Ain't you never heard the old saying, if you can't beat him, giant him? You've thrown in with them? Yeah, this time you ain't running away. Well, you... uh... The next bullet will go through your head, Veron. Now get your men out of here fast. Still giving orders, Sylvanus? That ain't no way to talk to a partner. Partner? Sylvanus. Sorry, my dear. You're with them? You're responsible for this? Not this part of it, I assure you. Oh, he's a fancy gentleman. He's too soft for this. Sylvanus likes things sweet and pretty. He likes to make up phony companies and jump town with money before anybody catches on. You. How could you? Get inside, Addie. Don't tell me I what... said get inside. Come on, Addie. No hard feelings, dear on. I just don't like my partners cutting in on my share. Well, who says you get the girl? I said so. If anyone wants to argue the point, just try coming up these stairs. I can't begin to tell you what I think of you. A man who'd steal from friends who team up with criminals and murderers. You're as bad as they are. You're worse. Shut up. Run for it. Find Stephen and tell him what happened. Now get in the house and no tricks. Sorry I can't invite you gentlemen in. Why, you could trust us. You don't have to keep your hand on that gun. It's like taking a hot brick to bed on a cold winter night, Theron. It makes me feel all warm and comfortable. Theron. Where are you going? What do you care? I don't like people sneaking in back doors behind me. Come over here. How long do you think you can get away with this? I don't know, Theron. It'll be very interesting to find out. That mailman's going to be mighty surprised when he finds his boats on the wrong side of the river. Theron ain't gonna have to worry about guns getting back to Miami now. Think he'll try to swim after it? If he don't, he'll have to ride one of them alligators across. Wanna stick around and see the fun? There won't be nothing to see if the gators get to him. Let's get a drink and be comfortable. All right, if he hollers real loud, we'll come back and enjoy it.
on its way up the river. What were you trying to do out in that boat? Get yourself killed? I knew you'd try to get across anyway. Oh, Stephen, I was so frightened for you. How do you think I felt about you? Daddy. Daddy. Don't cry. Everything's gonna be all right now. No, it isn't. The beachcombers are in Miami, robbing and stealing and maybe killing by now. What? And Sylvanus and Paget are in with Sylvanus. them. Sylvanus? They've been back of the whole thing. I knew he couldn't be trusted. We'll give that slick dude a new kind of necktie. We may be too late to do anything. Oh, no, we're not. Once we get these guns to Miami, it'll kind of equalize things. Come on, let's get that boat. You ought to be getting tired of this about now. Where did you tell her to hide? I told you I don't know where she is. You covered for you, lion. Maybe he's telling the truth, Dan. Maybe the little lady outsmarted the great man. <laughs> Not that I'm saying you should stop hitting him, of course. Thank you, Paget. Always nice to hear from a friend. You're a mighty smart. Ah! Ah! The girl got up to the river and warned the mailman. They'll bring the guns down. What? So that's where you sent your little runaway. You changed sides pretty quick, mister. Sir, we got to do something. About what? One mailman. Well, the townspeople have sneaked across the river. They'll be coming back with the guns. Yeah, they'll have us outnumbered. Let's get out of here. I spent enough time in them jungles. We'll wait for the schooner. Do that. By that time, they'll have to ship you in ice. I well, said, I don't get out of here. Come on, let's go. Let's go. You couldn't have cut off that beachcomber who gave the alarm. He sneaked past us before we could stop him. Next thing we heard, pulling out of town like the militia was after him. And with all of our money, worse luck. We were just getting ready to go across. Paget and Sylvanus go with him? Must have. Come on, let's see how much more damage they did. Wait a minute. You better get back where the women and children are hiding. There still might be trouble over there. I've got to get home. Pa's still over there. All right, let's go. Lie down. Everybody lie flat in the bottom of the barge. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Get out. No sense in taking chances. Doc and I will pull her across. You folks stay down. Sneaking his men back into town, wasn't it? If it works. <laughs> Which do you prefer if the townspeople win, Paget? Being strung up at the neck or tarred and feathered? Either way would be an improvement. Sarah will take care of you when he gets back. And how is he going to take care of you? Think how much money he'd have for himself if he got rid of both of us. 
not scared, are you, Paget? All right, I'm scared. What can I do about it? Well, I don't think there's anything you can do. But there's something we can do. What do you mean? What do you mean? Hold your fire till we get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can find a spot on the beach to hail a passing boat. We'll have all the money. We won't have to split with their eyes. That's right. We'll get away together. You got good ideas, Sylvanus. Cut these thongs first, Patchy. That's right. Got to get the money. Just let me have your knife. I'll take care of them myself. You and me always did get along, Sylvanus. Never did trust that there. <laughs> the knife, Patchy. The knife. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you want this, don't you? Fooled you, didn't I? Not so drunk, am I? But I'd split the money with you, huh? Why? <laughs> so long, Sylvanus. <laughs> so long, rat. I suppose I'm lucky you didn't decide to steal my watch and studs. Huh? Ah, I always said you had good ideas, Sylvanus. <laughs> watch and studs, huh? They'll hop pretty high when I get back to civilization. <laughs> Not that you'll be needing the time of day where you're going. <laughs> See anything, Stephen? No, oh, looks like it's going to be all right. Stephen! 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 Stephen, it's a trap! It's Sylvanus! Sylvanus! The beach! It's an ambush! Duck down, everybody! Down. Cut that rope. They cut the rope. We can't get any closer. Get them, boys. They're sitting down. Patty! We got most of them. Where is Sylvanus? Yeah, where is that weasel? Did I hear my name mentioned? Come out of there, you... Yeah, no, we no, want no, no, you. No, no, don't, don't make a fuss about me. No, no banquets, no bouquets. Banquets will throw you to the gators. Hi, Father. String him up. Gentlemen, good please. Good Your ingratitude wounds me. Can you forget so easily what I've done for you? Done for us? You burned by barn. You started the whole thing. Stole our money. No, 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 you're mistaken. I had no part in looting the town. At the time, I was risking my life to help Miss Titus escape. And later, I risked it again to warn you of Theron's ambush. And lastly, lastly, with a reckless daring that, uh, that still fills me with admiration, I, I managed to tie that rope. 
and turn the tide of battle. That's true. He did save our necks. You gonna let this swindler bluff us no. again? No! As for the money. As for the money, gentlemen, I alone, personally, single-handed and unaided, captured the scoundrel Paget and recovered the cash box. In it, you will find every cent of the company's money, including $1,000, which I now cheerfully donate to repair any damage and to express my undying faith in the glorious future of Greater Miami. Ah, search your souls, gentlemen. I think you owe me a vote of thanks. I think we owe you a piece yeah. of love. One of us must be right. Now, uh, Stephen, you're a man of judgment. Uh, what do you say? You're getting off easy this time, but you put a foot in Florida again. It'll be a pleasure to deprive you of the pleasure. Sylvanus! Sylvanus! I just couldn't let you go without even saying goodbye to you. Oh, I'm glad you came. Now I could give you this in person. You'll find it's already signed over to both of you. What is it? The deed to my property. Oh, no, we could No, please. Your first wedding present. Hang on to it long enough and your grandchildren will be wealthy. And since you have so much better chance of having grandchildren than I, Steve and I tried hard to take it away from you. But it's better this way. Better for Annie, better for you, and probably better for me. A kiss for the bride? Thanks, Stephen. Goodbye, you two. Uh, down here, Captain? Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Bunnell. Goodbye, Captain. Uh, excuse me, Captain, but, uh, who is that gentleman? Man from New York. Down here to arrange about putting a railroad through from Titusville. Well, I fear he's in for a rough time. They're rather touchy about swindlers in Miami. Not him. He's the McCoy. He left me a copy of the New York Gazette. Got the whole story in there. Be a boom around here. Yes, land will go sky high. Hello, mister. Yes, a romantic disappointment. Did you ever lose a fortune in a minute, Captain? Well, I'm no gambling man. Oh, I like a game of uh, pinochle now and then. Oh, do you really? Well, that's interesting. I play occasionally to myself, though I generally lose. But what's a little money between friends? Come, Captain, let's set sail for Cuba. Fun, frolic, good fortune, and, uh... Pinochle? Pinochle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, get ready to sail. I'm glad you said to let him go. So am I, except it seems like an awful dirty trick to play on Cuba.